Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're having a magical day. Thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. Holy Toledo's Dominaria is so much fun. We have a new standard best of one deck, Selesnia Devil Creatures. That's the color combination of white and green. We are focused on flooding the field with creatures, generating tokens. It just, it's crazy. We're gonna do our best to break down the deck list, talk about the strategies, the synergies, showcase this within the ranked gameplay footage, and of course wrap up with our review of the deck and of course our pack opening. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to help support the channel. Let's take a look at the deck. Here we are, double creatures, 60 card standard, best of one, 2.5 average mana value. There are eight non-creatures, 28 creatures here, 24 land here as well. Uh, we do lose the creature land. Uh, it's a big hit, but at the end of the day, we gain so many um, aggro elements that it's not the end of the world. Plus, our opponents will typically be playing pain lands, which is to our advantage because if you're gonna do damage to yourself as I'm playing an aggro deck, I couldn't be more ecstatic, right? Um, so this is the deck. We're gonna make a lot of creatures. We're gonna power our creatures up. We're gonna make tokens uh, as well. So um, first off, let's talk about the new cards that are in the build. There is a four copy uh, Curion Beast Caller for two. It's a two, two. And whenever you cast a creature spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on the Beast Caller. So we can already see how this synergy is going to unfold. Whenever it dies, distribute those counters among any number of creatures that you control. Uh, which is absolutely ridiculous, right? So it's going to grow, and then if it's not exiled and it does die somehow, right? Destroy creature, it happens. Uh, we get to keep some of that value in play, which is fantastic. We have King Darian, 48 for 3, 2, 3. Other creatures get plus 1, plus 1. Pay 5, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on him, and make a 1, 1, which is great. And then we can also sacrifice it to give our tokens hexproof and indestructible until the end of turn. Fantastic. We have the Defiler of Faith, a 5-5 five, five with Vigilance, and whenever you cast a white permanent, you may pay 2 life to reduce its mana by 1 planes or white source. Whenever you cast a white permanent spell, create a 1-1 one, one soldier creature token, right? So this is very easy to accomplish. The majority of our deck has some white in it. There is really actually only 2 cards without a white source included in the build. Moving on, we have Queen Alina of Rudark for 3. Um... Its power and toughness is equal to the number of creatures we control. And then if one or more tokens would be created, we'll create that many tokens plus a 1-1 one, one soldier as well, which is fantastic, right? So we have both the queen and the king in the deck, which is fantastic. And then filling around with stuff that we know and love. Hopeful initiate is a 1-drop, one 1-2. One, Training, pay 3, remove 2 counters from some creatures that we control to destroy artifact or enchantment. Very, very nice. Again, it's going to get bigger. It's going to get better every turn, and it has additional control elements to it. The Gallagreeders, 1-1 one, one for 2. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, choose one that's not been chosen this turn. Plus 1, plus 1 counter on the Greeders. Create a trapped, tra a trapped, a tapped treasure. <laughs> you gain 2 life, right? Um, Park Heights Pegasus, a 2-1 flying trample. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. If you had 2 or more creatures, enter the battlefield under your control this turn, right? So uh, that's quite nice. Wedding announcement, at the beginning of your end step, put an invitation counter on it. If you've attacked with two creatures, draw a card. If not, create a 1-1 one, one token. When it flips, you'll gain plus one, plus one on all of your creatures. The welcoming vampire, 2-3 with flying, and whenever a creature enters the battlefield with power two or less, draw a card, triggering only once each turn. Adeline, its power is equal to the number of creatures we control. Whenever you attack with a creature, create a 1-1 one, one tapped and attacking human. Its toughness is four with vigilance. Torn, Piss of the Angel, 2-2 two, two with training. Whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one, uh, token with training. It's a, a soldier as well. Ginny Fey, whenever you would create a token, you could either create a 2-2 two, two instead or a 3-1. 2-2 um, two, two with haste, 3-1 with vigilance, which is really, really quite nice. The Wandering Emperor, uh, a 3 loyalty, 4 mana planeswalker with flash. You can activate loyalty abilities at instant speed if it enters with flash. Uh, or actually on the turn it enters, right? Because I guess you could cast it at sorcery speed and it's still, right? Uh, anywho, put a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature. Uh, it gains first strike. Create a 2-2 two, two token. Exile target uh, tapped creature. You gain two life. Um, so, you know, some control elements. We can make tokens here on our opponent's turn to trigger. Um, you know, the Gallagreeders again. The Welcoming Vampire again. Um, which is really quite nice. 
And uh, then we have some control. There's the Valorous Stance, either giving us indestructible or destroying creature with toughness four or greater. And then the Lantern Flare, dealing X damage to target creature or planeswalker. And we gain X life where X is equal to the number of creatures that we control. And we go quite wide with that, right? So it's not uncommon to deal like seven, eight damage and gain a bunch of life. This is really nice in other aggro matchups. You're going to love it. Um, so that is the deck in its entirety. We have the farmlands, we have the who endures, we have the seed of the empire. Um, you know, no creature lands here anymore. So uh, really just relying on the deck as a whole. And uh, the King Darien giving indestructible and hexproof on all the tokens that we create is absolutely fantastic. So I know you're going to enjoy that. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed the deck tech. Uh, after today's gameplay footage, we will have a pack opening as well. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's play some magic. Looky here. Let's go first. A little good game. Initiate. Flare for one. Uh, do we go Fist or Cathar? Mono red, huh? Foreign will probably get removed. That's not great. Let's just go straight to Adeline. Lightning strike on Gala. It's okay. Hit for two. Fourth land off the top, hopefully. Adeline is good. They need to deal with this. Looks like they will. Firebrand, I like it. Cool guard. Let's swing in, train up, take a draw, make a token. We lose Adeline here, I assume. Burn spell. Yep. It's okay. It happens. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sick, dude. Going first with really bad land, so it's just a mulligan. This is really good land. I have to toss the angels, I guess. The king is far superior. I don't want to throw, like, hmm. I should throw the planes away, but I can't get caught without the right land, right? Initiate out. Oh, Jenner's Visitor, this is going to be bad. Gala, we have for one. Hashtag, let's go. Tommy. King in play. Gala gets a counter. We train. Pretty good. Pretty good. Need another cool card off the top. I mean, worst case of land, we've got Defiler on five. It's not great, though. Visitor. 
and then a naturalist. Oh, Machiko. That's pretty good. They don't have a lot of enchantments, though. In fact, Machiko's the only one. But it's still good. Like, even that in and itself is like, okay, nice play, nice play. We go down to 14. They catch up quite quickly. We kill Machiko. We cast this for two. This costs three. I think we kill it. What if they put life gain on? Even if they put life gain on, we're screwed. I think we still take it, though. Commune, okay. Land or enchantment. Circle is removal on the king. I'm pushing up the Kami to seven, hitting for nine. We do not have lethal unless we top. Oh no, we do with the defiler. Oh no, we don't because the king pushed them up. Shit! My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. And they don't attack full in. This is probably a very bad attack, but... What choice do you have? Down to one. They deal with the Defiler, that's it. If they even play more enchantments, that's it. Yeah. Whoops. Okay. Maybe we shouldn't have attacked. I don't think we could have played the long game, though, either. They would have just defended again, right? That was close. Nice. Opponent goes first. Um, turn one, turn two. Looks nice. Interesting. Here's the question. Do we go right in with the Pegasus or with the Beast Caller? Probably the Beast Caller. Oof. So they just have more of that. Well, it is what it is. I assume this just gets dunked on immediately. Cool, 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 cool. Chandra, woof. Another two drop or one drop, or we just play the Emperor instead. Five available cards, one of them being an um, Bloodthirsty Adversary. I wanted to call it the Intrepid. That's not right. Do we block this? No. Let's hit Chandra. And turn. Okay. 
Emperor Exiled Bloodthirsty. We take uh, damage. It's not great. Mono. We take another damage. Also not great. Hit for zero. Hit for negative two, actually. We're going to gain some life. Up to 17, they will remove the Emperor. Right? Lightning Strike over to our girl. We take out their creature. One mana up. Beautiful. Gala Greeters, go. Pegasus, go. Draw to life. I'm going to gain to life. We're going to hit Chandra for two. I know, it's not enough. We need to do more, but it's it's fine. It's whatever. It's good enough. Four cards in their hand. Infantry is good. It's a two, three through Kamano. One land open here as well. Take one damage, they gain one mana to two available in the pool. Three cards in hand. Argo. What a top deck. Let's continue to just uh, gain life and begin pumping out the damage. As long as we can keep top decking creatures, things will be okay. They have four cards in their hand. Um, that could get very messy very quickly. A freaking bloodbath, dude. Twin Fern Skis. Double strike on them. No, they're copying their next instant or sorcery. That's brutal. It's removal. Is this okay? Okay, you settle down over there. I like it. We'll send out the nice. It's a lot of damage, dude. It's a trade no matter what. I'm just going to take that if you do not mind, sir. Good game. Woof. See me? Again with the green, the green land, really? Have to keep three. Watch, we'll just draw land, land, land. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, but we've got a copy of it. So even if they do take it, it's coming back. That might force them to take the caller. Hmm. Take three. Another doogie. Wow. Let's see if we can survive long enough. The underdogs are so good. Oh, Lily. Lily, Lily, Lily.
You're good. You are good, girl. No land. As we discard the stance. We really just want to land off the top. Oh, that's good. That just finishes us off. So we can kill it. Kill Lily. Keep some defenders, right? We're down to five, though. Wow, they just will not stop. <laughs> they will not stop. Drawing a card is good. Land into play. Of course, we don't get another creature. It's a 3-4 that they buff up for lethal. We're chilling. Whew. This is going to be a close one as well. Don't you... Oh my gosh, that's just going to win the game. Nice. So low on life. Let's try to kill it. We just take the underdog. As long as we can keep playing creatures to offset the apocalypse. I guess. Again, you are such a dog, dude. How will we find removal? <laughs> right, just draw a card, gain one life. Cool. If only we had that fifth land. Caller goes up. Let's grab some life, first of all. Let's 
smash in. And I think we die on our upkeep when we draw, right? We don't have enough for lethal. That won't work. Ouch. That apocalypse is winning them the game here. Right, and then they just dump into this for lethal. That's game. Really good game though, right? Like, <clears throat> we're just about to take over. Why don't they double dump? Oh, because they want us to die with the apocalypse. Ha ha. Very funny. <laughs> Very funny. They could have double dumped in. Whatever. Good game still. Going first. Uh, I like it. Gala is away. River Tears. Is this a uh, Jund uh, Wind Grace? I hope we see Jund Wind Grace. That would be cool. Or one. Have a token. Or not token. Well, I guess we do get a token from the announcement, but a counter on the greeters. Don't mind my dyslexic mind. Everything is everything. Don't worry about anything. Harvester. Cool, 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 cool. Beast Caller 1. Beast Caller 2. I guess we chill. Make the treasure token. I don't necessarily want to lose. Yeah. Oh, it is a wind grace. Nice. Now this I like. This is a deck I want to build that haven't had the chance to yet. We kind of have a list um, online posters for everyone to check out, but nothing, you know, cemented. No official deck list. This is a treasure. Let's swing in. Right, we do have Nganjo. We do have the Emperor's. It's enough. Eight damage. Not... The end of the world. Okay. Play the Emperor. First strike gala. We get Wind Grace. We lose the Beast Caller. It doesn't have any plus one counters. Take the draw. And we transform into the festivities. Looking for another creature. Right, it is cast, not enters. Galas is enters. Um, so the Emperor Samurai wouldn't trigger the callers. Ooh, 
they take our creature. No, they go straight. They read ahead to phase two or lore two for the draw meat hook card. Let's take out Gix. One, two, three, four. Let's push Gala to six. Let's push Beast Caller to six. Twelve, uh, fourteen, sixteen damage, actually. Math. I didn't even add it up until just there. Good game, dude. Going first, there's good land, it's a good curve, and we have maybe protection slash removal. No, does it get better than this? It might. Saving who endures. Ah, uh, Jessica deck, Ledger Shredder, so good, dude. Let's go. Big damage for seven. Taking them to 12. Right quick. Right quick about it, huh? Third land. Drake, this is good. Do they second cast for the Shredder? They do. Conniving, taking a draw as well. So two four, they non land gets discarded here, and then a three two, pretty good. Stance on the shredder, caller and play. I'm going all in. I don't care. I'll take the Drake for the king. Looks like we just take it down to one. Interesting. That's a lot of damage, like fairly quickly, right? That's our turn four down to one. Would have been cool. Uh, take lethal, yes, sure. On turn four as always, but getting them down to one should be enough, right? We should be able to get a little harder without the creature land in case there, you know, was a field wipe, but I think there's other ways to mitigate that potentially. Workshop Ward Chief we don't use, but a good, a good, you know, example of that. Okay. We still have enough attackers though. They need a march and then they need to mass discard. Good game. Killing it. Holy Toledo's. Pretty cool deck. I think that we could incorporate the Intrepid Adversary for even more sauce, and then we're off to the races. So, you know, maybe Ginny Faye leaves. Maybe Welcoming Vampire even leaves. And I do think the Intrepid would be really cool. I like Lantern Flare's life gain as well, but at the end of the day, the Intrepid, I feel like would be very, very good here. So um, let me know how you feel on the Intrepid, right? Is that something that we really want to play in this deck or not? Hit me up in the comments below. Let's open a pack. All right. Let me just switch scenes quite quickly. Here we go. We are in the Midnight Hunt. A set to booster. Obviously, we're pulling a, um, a Meat Hook Massacre here. Did I mention that I cannot get into these for the life of me? Any other pack I can tear right into. But this specific box of Midnight Hunt, it's like damn near childproof. All right, we have a Flesh Taker uh, full art, which is cool. I mean, terrible card, but nice art. 
right? It's just the art cards are so cool. You can make any card cool with a full art and a full art swamp. Right? We really like that. Not a holographic, even though it looks like it. It's just super shiny. And then we'll get in through the limited cards. Look for anything good. The stinger's not bad. We like that. The blessing. I actually don't mind that card. Reaper. Interesting. What is this? This is like mid-pack. Um, Visions of Ruin for four mana. Sorcery. Each opponent sacrifices an artifact. For each artifact sacrificed this way, you're, you create a treasure token. Flashback for 10. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest mana uh, value of a commander you own on the battlefield or in your command zone. Interesting. Sorcery speed for four. Painter. Admirer. Light up the night. Also flashback uh, burn card, basically. That's not too shabby. And then, of course, another admirer, because who wouldn't like that? Not a bad pack here whatsoever. Let's see what we get. Art, the land, and two red rares. Interesting. Maybe we need to play mono red deck. Shout out to CGB. He was playing mono red today. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you have an absolute magical day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It does help produce these videos as a regular basis. And I can't wait to see you soon in the next.